Hello. Today we're looking at web scraping with Scrapy using Python and we will be extracting images of back issues of the Raspberry Pi magazine Magpie. Now, I'm not going to uh, overload their site. I'm just going to extract the back issue cover images from page one. So that page is magpie.raspberrypi.org forward slash issues. So that will form the basis of what we're going to do next which is open scrapey shell and we're going to fetch that fetch that URL nearly typed that URL okay response.200 now we know there's a load of images on that page so let's just check and let's just see if we can get the class name so what is the class name of the image hover over the image and it looks like c-link so I'm just going to copy that C link and we're going to write a selector using XPath. So um, we'll make it into a variable. So X equals response dot XPath. And we're writing all this so that we can copy it into our spider code and that will then allow us to create the spider which will then go off and do all this for us automatically two forward slashes so from the current level of the DOM I'm just going to put an asterisk there so here's the good bit that class equals and then we use the opposite quotes to what we've begun with so if you've used double quotes to begin with then the inner quotes would be single always use the opposite so the class equals c-link and next two forward slashes img at src close the quotes close the parentheses and We have a problem. Why is that? <laughs> Wrong quote. <laughs> I wasn't lying. And let's do get all. And now we've got all of the links. Let's just do print x. And there we see. That variable is equal to the response.xpath which gets all of the image source, the image at src, so all of the image names. For the class c-link. The reason why that's there is because there are other images on the page. Now if we look up we we don't want to get um, we don't want to get that image for instance or any of these. So we're only interested in c-link Okay.
we have a list of image names now. What we can do, copy that. Here. So we've begun our spider. I'll run through this in a second. This is just making a folder to store the images in. As the start URLs I've not explicitly uh, written in because it does it anyway. It's implicit. The response from that comes to pass. So pass takes that response and links. So just now we had a variable called x. Um, obviously make it more meaningful in this, we're calling it links. So all of those links, which I believe there were about 10, <laughs> you can see there that it's already been run, so if <laughs> you can actually, uh, I can't count them, but it's probably 10 or 11. So for each image URL in that group of links, we want to follow that URL and then we want to go off and run scrape image on that image URL. Now, the image URL, we just need to, we need to write it to a file name. So once we've got it, we just use response.body and then that gets written to the file. And the file is called file store, which is a directory we make plus file name. Now, file name is equal to the URL that we've passed to this method, but we need to strip off any extra characters at the end. Uh, so we're splitting it at a question mark and then we're taking the bit to the left of the question mark and then we're splitting it again into uh, sections and then we're going to take the last the last part of that so file store what we're doing is uh, we're making we're making file store from scratch each time because we don't want old JPEGs cluttering up our uh, nice clean directory of downloads. So what we do is we've imported shutil which allows us to remove file store which is this. File store is just a directory containing our JPEGs and PNG. Hmm. Uh, potentially we could filter that. That's stage two. Um, I've added time.sleep in there because when I was running before it was just, uh, I think it was running so fast it was skipping over it or whatever. But um, if we run this, you can see we've gone off each time and Scrape is asynchronous so when you're looking at the output it's not always uh, it can be can be mixed up so let's just see that's looking good there you see all the image covers from the front page and if we go to file store, I don't think I can open these. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not able to open them in Ubuntu. So what I may well do is quickly open, uh, make a new folder in on my Windows machine. And I'm just going to paste in
not entirely sure why it wouldn't open in uh, Ubuntu, but there we go. We've extracted the covers. The first, I think it's 10. The first 10 covers going back backwards from the current the current cover of, of uh, Magpie Magazine. Magpie Magazine is the Raspberry Pi magazine. Um, so let's just do a recap on what we've covered here. Class equals, so we use that every time, but to find the images, this is the key part. So after the square brackets, so everything inside the square brackets is called the predicate. So we do two forward slashes, IMG, another forward slash, at SRC. So this is the key part to make our selector. And then using response.url.split, we're able to break up the URL that was passed uh, from pass from here and once we've split it up we can then use that as our file name and then response.body so image at forward slash at src one key thing key part of this tutorial um, response.url another key thing to look at response.body another thing and shutil.rm tree use this with caution because it will delete recursively so if you've got folders inside it will delete those as well so <laughs> never use it on your top directory because it will actually delete your spider and all your spider files scrapey files um, so just to uh, conclude I'll list all of the key parts here so response.body response.url um, forward slash forward slash img forward slash at src and shutil.rm tree. So the four main points of this video, I hope it's been interesting. And if it has, then um, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and all that. So uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye.